What's up guys, it's your girl from BeFit. If you don't know who I am, I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today we are doing another TikTok reaction video. This is gonna be part three, and this one is gonna be focused on weight loss workouts. The other two were very diet focused, so much BS on TikTok related to diet, but the weight loss workout space is just as bad. goes without saying but you can't lengthen your legs through exercise that has to do with your bones can't really change that what i will say is that if you were to lean out your legs they may appear longer fine i'll give her that one what does clean mean what does a clean leg look like long lean clean legs i just can't even begin to understand what that means so this is the beginning of a few videos and a whole series and massive pile of BS on TikTok and all over the internet of the idea that spot reduction is possible. Doing a leg workout doesn't mean that you're going to get lean legs. I see a lot of people wanting a or asking for a toned look, like I want to look toned. So what does that mean from a fitness professional perspective? That means losing body fat and gaining muscle. They are two different things. So a workout alone is going to potentially build muscle, but you cannot lose fat unless you are in a calorie deficit. And if you are in a calorie deficit, it's not automatic that the fat loss is going to come from your legs just because you're doing leg workouts. It doesn't work like that. If you already have a low body fat percentage and you do leg workouts, then you will get a more toned look because you're building muscle tissue. And I think women are really afraid of gaining too much muscle and looking bulky, but I can tell you from personal experience and just like the science of it all, it's not gonna happen. Women have to work so hard to get that bulky look. I've done bodybuilding competitions where the whole point was to gain as much muscle as possible for me, and it's hard, it's really hard. So. I see a lot of content creators, especially blog putting out content of here's a workout to get lean, whatever. All muscle tissue is lean muscle tissue. It just depends how much of it you build. So that TikTok by blog wasn't clearly saying like spot reduce fat or lose fat from your legs, but it was kind of implied. And I think it kind of falls into that same category, but let's move on. Here's a perfect example of somebody claiming that you can burn fat from a specific area just by working out that area. And it's just not true. So the reason that these videos are popular and get picked up by a lot of people is like, let's say you, your problem area is side fat. That's what you want to get rid of. And this person doesn't have a, that same problem and they're presenting you with the solutions. So they're like, oh, that person doesn't have this problem. They must know how to fix that problem. And you know, with a workout, it's like, might as well try it, what's the harm, right? But I think what ends up happening is somebody will try the workout and then not get the results they expected, but rather than questioning the validity of this person and their workout, they think that it was something they did wrong, especially when these things start trending and so many people are doing them and claiming to be getting results. Then the person is like, okay, obviously that's proof that this works, Like, but it's just not working for me, what's wrong with me? And a lot of times what happens with these workout trends is people might get some sort of result, but they don't understand what actually caused that result. So they're claiming it was exactly this that solved the problem. So let's say that somebody has side fat, they start doing this every single day and they end up losing weight and like which makes their waist smaller or their side, they lose their side fat, right? So let's say enough people do this that some people get that result, post their positive result, basically proving that this is right. But what they don't realize is simply exercising on a daily basis when maybe they weren't doing any exercise at all could have been the cause. So they could have done 
any exercise in the world on a regular basis and gotten the exact same result. But because they did this one, they claim that this is the reason that it worked. So yeah, maybe it's not that big a deal if somebody does this workout. But in the grand scheme of things, also having so many videos like this claiming that spot reduction is real makes it harder for people to believe fitness professionals like me who are actually putting out information saying that this doesn't work and it's providing proof that this does work. Maybe this particular tiny little workout in the context of itself and a little tiny bubble isn't an issue, but when you look at the big picture, it's a part of the problem and it's what's resulting in people getting so frustrated and never getting results because they keep falling for stuff like this because it's normal. Like this is so normal that so many people aren't even questioning it. It's a problem. This is only the second video and I'm already getting so Okay, let's just move on to the next one. If you want to get rid of a muffin top, keep listening. I'm about to show you how. Lie down on the floor with your feet flat on the ground and your arms by your sides. Lift one leg in the air and pulse your hips upwards three times. Then lower to the ground. Repeat 10 reps on the right side and then 10 reps on the left side. After doing this for a few weeks, you should definitely start to see some progress. No, no. No. So this girl in particular is verified on TikTok. And I think that when people see a check mark, they are way more trusting of that person. And so this girl has put out multiple videos like this about spot reduction and they absolutely blow up and go crazy. This video in particular though, let's just say that spot reduction is real. Let's just say that you can exercise away your muffin top and spot reduce it and target it specifically. The exercise she did is nowhere near targeting your muffin top. That was a glute exercise. It was not... Okay, let's move on. Before we jump into the next video, I wanna give you some context. So if you're on TikTok, I guarantee you've seen some iteration of this trend. If you're at all in the fitness weight loss, part of TikTok. And if you're not on TikTok, it's hard for you to understand how absolutely crazy stuff can blow up. Like trends don't just like trend. They go absolutely wild. Like everybody's doing it. I mean, maybe that's just my perspective as like somebody who's deep into like fitness weight loss TikTok, but I can't escape this trend. And I actually did a response reaction video, like duet to one of these. And some people were pretty upset at me for saying the things that I said about this trend. And once I show you the video, I'll let you know basically what I said in my duet. This video has 11.6 million views. Now, my entire TikTok is filled with people doing this like movement. And I'll show you the particular video that I critiqued. Okay, so you can see in the very first video, it was very like isolated and controlled. And that's gonna do something different than what this person in the video was doing, which is more of like a floppier movement, like not as intentional. You can tell her core isn't in, as engaged as the original video was. And in the text, it said, I could have been burning belly fat this whole time doing this instead of Chloe Ting workouts. Again, you can't spot reduce fat. So moving your core is not gonna automatically mean that you're going to tighten that area or burn belly fat. The second thing that I noticed, and this isn't a guarantee, I don't know her personally, so I can't say for sure, but what I'm seeing is because the Chloe Ting thing was a huge trend on TikTok for a while. And so what this person is doing is they're hopping from trend to trend, trying to solve their problem, which is belly fat. And so that's my issue with trends. I wanna teach people so that they can understand and make an informed decision instead of just trying and trying and trying and trying all these things that may get them results, but probably won't get them the results that they're looking for. So in my duet, all I said was, if this is supposed to be a core workout for you, then you need to very intentionally engage your core and not make it as floppy. It needs to be like, decide what the purpose of the movement is and do that and focus on that. So if 
you are wanting it to be a core exercise. It is not gonna be any more effective than any other core exercise that you could do. So pick the core exercise that you're gonna enjoy the most. If you are doing it just as a form of exercise, just to burn calories, it's basically the equivalent of just like flopping around. Like you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be that strict movement. If you're not purposefully engaging your core, you can kind of do whatever you want. Movement burns calories, which is gonna help you lose weight. You don't have to be strict about what that movement looks like. So this trend, in my opinion, what I was seeing people doing is they were under the impression that this particular movement was something special and it's not. There's no particular movement out there that's gonna be special. So all I said was, if you aren't engaging your core, you might as well be flopping around. And people thought that that was horrible of me to say, but I recommend dance for exercise all the time, whether that's choreographed dance or just flopping around and having fun. Fun and enjoyment should be a part of the exercise process. So I wanna bring up another video that kind of explains this point. Every time this guy pops up on my For You page, I get so excited and so happy to see him doing this. And so it's like the movements, if you really look at the movements of these two different things, this guy dancing versus the trend, they're very similar. They're both a very kind of like boppy movement. But the difference that I see is he is just moving his body however he wants to because it's fun and he enjoys it. And he understands that movement on a consistent basis because this is day 37 he's been doing this consistently is going to get him results versus the trend where people are doing that particular exercise or movement very limited because they think that it's special and of course that's not going to be accurate for everybody but this is a significant difference that I want people to understand. If you do that movement from the original video and you do it on a regular basis, it's gonna be the same exact thing that he's doing. Yes, encouraging people to exercise is awesome. I love that these trends are encouraging people to exercise when maybe they wouldn't have already. But what I don't agree with and what I'm not okay with is people being motivated by false hope. In the long term, that's not a good thing. So I understand why people are upset that I'm calling things out and saying this exercise isn't going to do what you think it is because I get a lot of reaction of like, oh, well, now I'm just going to give up. Like, thanks for demotivating me. And it's like if knowing the realistic results of an exercise demotivates you, you needed to hear it because you're setting yourself up for failure in the long term because you have unrealistic expectations. Okay, switching gears, this video coming up is another big misconception that I see about exercise and weight loss. Okay, so in the video, you can tell that her waist is getting smaller. And in the video, she's showing consistently using this sweat band and all of this sweat coming off of her body. So there's a concept that people really need to understand when they're analyzing all of this stuff. Like this applies to any single one of these videos we talked about today. There's a difference between correlation and causation. So this video is implying that her wearing the sweat band during her workouts is causing her waist to get smaller or is a factor that's causing her weight to get smaller. It's probably not the only thing because I'm sure she would say like the workouts are helping as well, but it's implied that the sweat band is causing waist to get smaller because otherwise why would she be wearing it? So here's what I'm seeing from this video. Sweating does not mean you're burning more calories. It does not mean you're burning more fat. That is a huge misconception that I see. Sweat does not equal more calorie burn. What happens when you sweat more is you're, you're losing your body's water, which will result in a decrease on the scale, but fat loss and weight loss are different. So here's something really important about this that I wanna discuss. Her wearing the sweat band may have caused her to work out more because she believed that it was working or optimizing her fat loss if the seeing the sweat was 
something she was considering as proof that she was making progress, encouraging her to keep going. Because I think a lot of the reason people quit is because they don't, they aren't seeing progress and they have nothing to prove that they should keep going. People are very impatient when it comes to fat loss. So that's going to be the biggest benefit of something like this. Like she obviously was very consistent because we saw video after video after video of her wearing the sweatband, pulling it off and all the sweat coming out. So that's the perfect example of correlation rather than causation. So if seeing a visual cue of all of this sweat pouring out of your sweatband is going to motivate you to keep going, right on, cool. Like I'm not mad at it. But I've gotten messages from people when I call out the whole sweat myth saying like, oh my gosh, this whole time I thought I was doing something wrong and I wasn't working hard enough because I wasn't sweating as much as all these other people who were all sweaty all the time when they work out. It's all very, it's like, there's a lot, there's a lot. And so I feel like, yeah, maybe there's nothing wrong with her doing this, but there is a problem with perpetuating myths because it can lead people down a path of never being able to get results because they just don't understand how to actually get results. All right, guys, so that's the end of the video. If you follow me on TikTok already, thank you. I just hit 100K, love you guys so much. If you're not already following me on TikTok, go ahead and do that. Follow me on Instagram as well, subscribe here, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching, bye.